There's two creation stories in Genesis. And they actually don't match completely in their structure. And what happened was someone they call the redactor, maybe it was a bunch of people, we don't know, took creation story one and creation story two from different places and thought, well, these are sort of the same and they're sort of different and people are going to be unhappy if we dispense with this one and they're going to be unhappy if we dispense this, this one, but they don't make sense together. So let's see if we can put them in some kind of order that makes approximate sense. And they took the newer one and put it second and took the... Sorry, they took the older one and put it second and put, took the newer one and put it first. So Adam and Eve is an older story than the story that I just told you. So, but it's a different story. It's written in a different style, but it's been more or less brought into narrative coherence with the first story. So, and you could say at the level of the sentence, there is paradoxes, but at the level of the chapter, let's say the stories make sense. So, okay, so what happens? Up there went from the earth a mist, and it watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. There's an identity in this archaic sort of thought between breath and spirit, right? Respiration, spirit, inspiration, spirit, pneuma, like pneumatic tire, spirit. The breath contains the spirit. Well, why is that? Well, because when people die, the breath leaves their body and so it's an easy thing to identify that with the animating spirit right anima means spirit as well so so th that's the phenomenological reality of the story and lord god planted a garden eastward in eden and there he put the man whom he had formed eden means well watered place well why well where do you want to live these are desert people right who are writing this well what do they want they want an oasis what's an what's an oasis it's a garden with water well you're gonna you're gonna live somewhere it's not gonna be out in the middle of the damn desert you want to be in a garden that's watered and then you could say you also be in a walled garden that's protected and that's what paradise means paradesa means walled garden so this initial paradise is a walled garden why walled order it's culture nature what does it mean? Well, that's the natural environment of human beings. It's, a, it's the optimal balance between culture and nature. That's what a walled garden is, with enough water flowing in it to keep it, to keep it fertile. And that water is also chaos, right? There has to be, it, it can't be static and dry and solid and stale. There has to be some living element to it. So, so it's a, a walled place that the water can still uh, uh, fructify. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight. So it's also full of trees. This is our natural habitat and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So these are two trees. They bring forth fruit that produce something. One produces the knowledge of good and evil and the other produces eternal life. So... Why? Well, I'll get to that in a bit. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted and became into four heads. We won't bother with that.